I'm Mercedes Stevenson, and this is the West Block Politics, Perspectives, and Players. We've been talking about the pandemic for a year now, but that hasn't changed the global situation for many communities who are facing significant human rights violations and threats. We wanted to take some time today to touch on that. So joining me to talk about the human rights situation across the world and what hot spots we should be paying attention to is anti-hate activist Fareed Khan. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Fareed. Uh, you know, we talk about COVID-19 all the time, and, and that certainly has an impact uh, on people who are marginalized populations, people in countries that are, are, are not able to buy the vaccine, not able to distribute them, don't have access to health care. But even putting all of that aside, there are still significant human rights concerns around the globe. I know it's hard to pick just one, but, but what is really standing out in your mind today uh, that, that the global media and especially the Canadian media should be paying more attention to? Well, I think there's uh, two issues. One, of course, is the Rohingya situation which has been made worse because of the coup in Myanmar. And the second would be what's happening to the Uyghurs in China. Fareed, what impact has the coup had on the Rohingya population? Well, uh, we have a situation now where the military is back in control and the architect of the genocide, uh, General Min, Hong Lane, who is the uh, chief of the defense staff in Myanmar, is now in absolute control. Um, of course, even before this happened, we had no real knowledge about what was going on, on to the remaining Rohingya in Myanmar, in Rakhine State, the region. And it's very, very difficult to get news out of that region. And what little news we do have is that uh, Rohingya continue to live in a very precarious situation in Myanmar. And we still have the situation of around 200,000 Rohingya who are locked up in government-run aspect of their life is being controlled by the military. What has the Canadian government's response to this been? Well, other than... Uh, there's one area where I will give credit to the Canadian government, and that is the uh, commitment of $300 million back in 2018, uh, over three years, for humanitarian aid for Rohingya refugees. However, that is set to run out at the end of March this year, and we haven't had any indication whether the government will uh, recommit to humanitarian aid. And that's very concerning because the UN uh, Office of... Uh, the uh, Office of Refugees has said that uh, there's going to be a shortfall and there may be cuts to services because of the financial shortfall. Um, with respect to what's happening in Myanmar, the government passed uh, or uh, ex declaring it a genocide. Uh, the prime minister and the cabinet voted to support those motions. But since then, the government has done nothing. Despite repeated calls by us and other human rights groups by senators and parliamentarians for the government to take action at the International Court of Justice by filing a genocide case, uh, the government has ignored those calls. And then in 2019, in November 2019, when Gambia did file a genocide case, we then asked the government to join the Gambia um, filing, and the government has not responded to that either. They've made a lot of uh, statements, uh, political statements, about how they're thinking about it and how they intend to, but they have taken no real concrete action. Fareed, you also mentioned uh, the Uyghurs, and of course there was a vote in, in Parliament, um, and in that vote, to declare it a genocide, cabinet decided to abstain. So some Liberal members of Parliament voted in favour of saying that what is happening to the Uyghurs in China is in fact a genocide, but the Prime Minister didn't vote, his cabinet didn't vote. What is your take on their decision to abstain from this? Well, I think it's extremely disappointing and regrettable. Um, this is a government that has repeated, since it came into power, that it is a supporter of the international legal order and the international rule of law. Well, part of that international legal order is the Genocide Convention to which Canada is a state party. In fact, Canada um, had been drafting the Genocide Convention and it ratified it uh, in the uh, early 50s. Um, 
after recognizing that genocide took place with respect to the Rohingya, the government did nothing. And in this case, with the Uyghurs, the government, the prime minister and the ministers didn't even support it, despite the overwhelming evidence that was provided and the personal testimonials that were presented, not just here in Canada, aside, as defined under the Genocide Convention uh, against the Uyghurs. And we can't have a government who says that they're in support of uh, human rights, they're defenders of human rights and the international rule of law, but then when it comes time to actually take action and do something, they're standing on the sidelines. It's just unacceptable. Why do you think they're doing that? Well, I think partly it has to do with uh, trade. Canada is a huge trading partner. There are business interests, and I'm sure those business interests are pressuring the government not to do anything that's going to damage their business interests. But you know what? Let's look at history. Uh, there was a superpower once. It was called Nazi Germany, and the West did trade with it. And it was doing trade with Nazi Germany at the time when they'd already established concentration camps. And we know what ended up happening because of the lack of action by the West um, towards those uh, human rights abuses being committed by Nazi Germany. Now, China is acting no differently. It has expressed its intent to be a world power. It has um, influenced uh, and bullied its neighbors. It's used its military and its financial clout to try and control other governments. And it has persecuted minorities for a long time. And right now, one of those minorities that it's persecuting in a very egregious way are the Uyghurs. And, you know, we, we stand up every year on Holocaust Remembrance Day and we say never again. And the prime minister put out a statement once again this year on January 27th on Holocaust Remembrance Day. And if you're going to do that, then you cannot say that you're not going to take action when never again is happening again. It's just, it's just unacceptable. What would you like to see the government do in this case, Fareed? I mean, obviously, to, to have voted and, and actually declared it a genocide and be calling that, uh, as some other countries have, but are there additional measures on top of that that you should think should be taken to, in some way, sanction China and express the disapproval for the human rights violations that are going on there? Well, yes, I think that uh, the Canadian government should be using Magnitsky sanctions across a swath of the Chinese leadership. There should be um, actual targeted sanctions against certain sectors. We do not want products that are produced by slave labor to be sold in Canada. That, that is just, uh, that's just something that we shouldn't be doing. In addition, I think that Canada should be working with its allies and its partners to um, make, Canada, make China pay a price for what it's doing. You can't allow a government um, uh, a nation to get away with the sort of atrocious and horrific human rights crimes that are being committed to just basically go on its merry way after rule of law. Um, we can't be a, uh, a part of this alliance of nations which says it stands up for human rights and then do nothing when atrocious human rights abuses are being committed and uh, we stand by and we just uh, shake our hands of it. Fareed, powerful interview and words. We thank you for your time uh, and for sharing this information with us. I think that it's important and, and Canadians want to know what's going on around the world, even as we are so focused uh, on this single news event. So thank you so much for joining us today and we hope to speak to you again soon. Yes, thank you for covering this subject.